You know, I've had the good fortune of traveling around the world with people like Patch Adams. Yeah, not Robin Williams, but the real Patch Adams. And one of the things I've learned is that, that when things go wrong, really is all about trying to find the good news. The good news of things. It's kind of like the comedian that says, I got some good news and I got some bad news. You'd be a real idiot to take the bad news, Don Pardo. How do you find the good news to keep you in the game to make the customer experience happen? I was, uh, I was in China clowning with Patch, because we clown together in various parts of the world, but I was in China clowning with Patch in an orphanage. And it was an amazing moment for me to realize the opportunities I have to make a difference and how often I'm so in myself that I don't. I was holding a little girl, and in China you're going to hold a little girl in an orphanage, not a little boy, because it's a country where you get one child per household, and if you can hide the pregnancy from the state, then you can put the little girl on the side of the road upon birth and play the genetic lottery again, so maybe you'll get a boy who you can pass your lineage through. So there are a lot of little girls in orphanages in China, and they're understaffed in those orphanages, so they tie those little kids up because they don't want them just falling down all the time, and so they tie them up and kids lose their natural muscle tone, and the atrophy of their muscle tone is prominent. So I'm holding a little girl who's touch resistant, partially sighted, and she has muscle atrophy. It took forever for my clown character, Looney Tunes, who's a musical clown, to play music to make the emotional connection to her. Finally, she's on his lap, and Looney Tunes is holding her and feeling her heartbeat against his chest, and in that moment, he gets perspective about how he can make a greater difference by getting out of his own stuff. Because you see, Looney Tunes was born August 11th, 1960. He was born in Trinidad, Colorado. His mom had a prior child in 1956. She hid that pregnancy from her parents for eight months. Because unlike China, where she was worried about the genetic, the, the, the sex of the infant, she was more concerned about what her parents would do to her in 1956 for bringing home a baby out of wedlock. So, parents detect it in the eighth month, she brings the child home, her parents say, you will never ever bring home another baby to this house unless you have a father attached. Well, she remembered that lesson for three years, but in 1959 something must have changed because suddenly she got pregnant again. But she learned one important lesson, how to hide the baby for the, the ninth month of the pregnancy. So here I am inside of her, she gets on a bus in Trinidad, Colorado is able to get across the state line to Raton, New Mexico, to give the child up for adoption. None of the family knew she'd carried a child to term. Told the uh, hospital workers there that, look, yeah, you know, I don't want to bring this child home. You don't know what the circumstances are. If I bring this child home, I can't do it. And they said, that's okay. Everything will be okay. You know, a lot of people have this postpartum phenomenon. They put her back on the bus. She comes back from Raton to Trinidad, Colorado, gets promptly out of the bus, goes behind the Foster Hotel near the bus station, and puts me in a trash can. Yes, I am white trash. <laughs> and I am a talk show host with great projection ability, and I was screaming at the top of my lungs at three days of age in a warm temperature in the southern part of Colorado on August 14, 1960, and Officer Lujan extracted me from the trash. Officer Lujan, who I later met as he was facing his retirement years in the police department in Trinidad, Colorado, and always wondered where that baby went. That baby went to a place in China where he held a similar spirited child. And he realized in that moment what the good news was. Ba -bum -bum. Now, how tragic is it that I had to travel halfway across the world to see someone less fortunate than me to appreciate what I had? Do I have resources to make a difference for customers? Yes. Do you have resources to make a difference for customers? Yes. If you look around the room, think about what you have as a collective to make a difference for those who need housing in this community. Look around the room and appreciate the great resources that you have been given to create the ultimate internal and external customer experience. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.